All right, I haven't seen anybody filter in in a little bit, so I think we'll just go ahead and get started. Welcome to uh, our Triton talk today for the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, which is quite a mouthful, so we just say SIO for short. Um, so if you ever hear us say Scripps or SIO, uh, that's just our shorthand for Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Um, I'm going to go through some slides with you today um, to cover a lot of the things that we do here for the undergraduate programs at Scripps. Um, but a couple nuts and bolts things first. Um, this session is being recorded, so um, it is available to view on the UC San Diego Admissions YouTube channel, which um, Kristen from Admissions has just put a link into the chat feature that you can go and rewatch this presentation later if you'd like, uh, or you can send it to a friend or somebody else that wasn't able to come. Um, so please keep in mind this presentation is recorded. Um, there is a Q&A feature in this Zoom um, platform uh, where you can submit questions to uh, us on the panel uh, that we can answer. Um, please don't share any personal information. Um, you can submit questions anonymously. Um, we will stop about midway through our uh, presentation to see if there's any questions that have come up that we want to address. Otherwise, we'll probably spend most of the latter uh, half of our presentation today addressing your questions. Um, so if anything comes up, feel free to pop a question in the Q&A feature uh, and we uh, will do our best to uh, get to your questions either at the midpoint or at the end of our presentation today. All right, so uh, my name is Sid Eads. I am one of the student affairs officers for the Scripps undergraduate office. Um, so uh, I am one of the advisors for the students who are undergraduates in the earth sciences, marine biology, oceanic and atmospheric sciences major, as well as our environmental systems interdisciplinary majors. Um, we also have a few minors in our program that we're going to talk to you about today, too. Uh, with me today is our other student affairs uh, officer, Darlene Garza. She is um, my coworker in our office. Um, we don't have any, um, I mean, we both are the advisors for all the majors, so we're not really split at all. So you can come talk to either of us for anything that comes up in uh, any of these majors or any of the undergraduate programs that we are going to talk about today. Um, but first, I'm just going to introduce quickly what Scripps Institution of Oceanography is. Scripps is over 100 years old. It's one of the oldest, largest, and most important centers for earth and marine sciences in the world, uh, as well as um, atmospheric sciences uh, and climate science as well. Um, we function as a department of UC San Diego, even though we actually are older than UC San Diego. We were uh, became part of the university when the university uh, launched its uh, campus here in the San Diego area um, in the 1960s, uh, where um, students can now pursue one of our eight majors or minors. Um, and we are located in La Jolla, California, in San Diego. Uh, and you can see a beautiful photo of our campus there on the side. And um, you can see in my background on Zoom here and Darlene's background, some photos from the Scripps campus where um, students will in normal times be uh, attending classes year round. Um, and it's a beautiful place to uh, go to school and work. Um, so uh, we can't really complain too much. Um, so uh, the mission of Scripps is to work uh, to understand and protect the planet, investigate oceans, earth, and the atmosphere to find solutions to our greatest environmental challenges. This is a, a mantra of all Scripps research and education. Um, and you'll see all these themes come up uh, multiple times in our coursework and in our majors. Um, Scripps offers undergraduates in, um, in, you know, in quite a broad spectrum of areas, including earth, uh, oceans, atmospheric sciences, as well as climate and environmental sciences, which are uh, mirrored by the major research areas of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So, um, the undergraduate program um, reflects a lot of the uh, groundbreaking research that happens at Scripps. Um, and we're very proud of um, both uh, pillars, uh, the research and the education components of our uh, campus. Um, to jump into the majors that we offer, uh, we offer a bachelor's degree in earth sciences, as well as environmental systems, which Darlene is going to cover in more depth a little bit later. Uh, we also have a bachelor's degree in marine biology and oceanic and atmospheric sciences. So 
um, earth sciences, marine biology, oceanic atmospheric sciences are kind of the three uh, core majors of the program uh, and they reflect the three kind of core uh, areas of research at Scripps. Um, the environmental systems program is an interdisciplinary program which combines a lot of the content from earth sciences, biology, oceans, atmospheres, as well as economics and political science to create an interdisciplinary program for environmental study. And like I mentioned, um, Darlene is going to go into a bit more detail uh, for the environmental systems uh, major uh, later. Um, some of the minors we offer are our earth sciences minor, uh, a marine sciences minor, uh, an interdisciplinary climate change studies minor, which uh, is new, as well as a uh, minor that has yet to be launched, uh, focusing on oceanic and atmospheric sciences. So again, we have minors that also reflect kind of the core research areas of Scripps. So if you decide not to do a full major um, in one of our uh, fields, you can certainly choose a minor instead. Um, the earth sciences and marine sciences minors are best uh, fits for students from um, STEM majors or other kinds of science-based majors because they do tend to have courses in those minors that have some science prerequisites, but um, the interdisciplinary climate change studies minor is accessible to students with any uh, background or major. Um, the atmospheric and ocean, the oceanic and atmospheric sciences minor would also probably be more of a STEM uh, heavy major, but there are other minors on campus too that we can point you to that um, if you're interested in this content, but maybe not interested in doing a science major um, that we can point you towards. All right, let's jump into the first of our major and our oldest major, which is our earth sciences major, uh, which might be getting a new update shortly uh, in terms of the content. But um, the earth sciences major uh, focuses mostly on coursework in the geosciences. So geology, geophysics, geochemistry, geological oceanography, you'll see that prefix uh, geo in a lot of coursework in our earth sciences major. Uh, and uh, there's quite a broad um, spectrum of content in those uh, fields. Um, there is a fairly significant amount of laboratory and field work in these majors. There's quite a few number, uh, there's quite a few classes that go on field trips um, to local areas in the San Diego area, but also some overnight weekend trips to some more, um, I wouldn't say exotic places, but not exactly in the urban San Diego area. They sometimes go out to the Joshua Tree area, uh, Anza Borrego area, some places where there's some really neat uh, geologic, um, uh, you know, uh, geologic uh, cool stuff out there. Uh, it's a great preparation for a career or graduate school in the geosciences, and we'll talk a little bit more about those kinds of careers uh, right now. Um, but actually, right, sorry, before that, um, if anybody here is interested in transferring in for those majors, I know um, probably most of you are interested in the um, in starting as a first year, not necessarily transfers, but if any of you are transfers out there, we do recommend that you uh, pre uh, cover all of more or less your lower division major requirements before you transfer. You can see those kind of spelled out here. Um, and if you're interested in transferring over, we can go in a bit more detail um, if you just contact us individually and we can kind of go over that with you. But general rule of thumb, if you're gonna transfer, try to get all of your lower division major coursework done in the sciences before you transfer. So all your math, chem and physics. But um, back to uh, careers in the geosciences. Um, geoscientists are a growing field. It's projected to grow by at least 5% in the next 10 years. Um, and it is a broad uh, career field, not just in um, kind of typical geology careers that you might think about, but uh, energies, a uh, big sector, environmental protection, uh, environmental consulting, responsible use management, resource management, uh, hydrogeology, uh, dealing with uh, the communities, uh, water resources. Those are all big fields uh, for geosciences uh, in, um, in the job market in the uh, coming years that are only gonna grow um, as the needs of our um, communities uh, grow in those fields as well. So job outlook for geoscientists is, uh, is very good and continues to be very good. Um, and uh, with that, we'll move on to marine biology. Um, marine biology is our largest major uh, in our undergraduate program. 
It's uh, been around for about 10 years, um, and we have had quite a lot of success with this major as well. Uh, it's um, not uh, part of the division of biological sciences. It's, our, it's under our umbrella at Scripps because of the uh, heavy focus uh, of Scripps research and uh, involvement with the Scripps faculty in our marine biology major. So it's a bio major, but it's not part of the bio department. So that's kind of neat. Um, and it covers uh, a lot of the core biological competencies, but through a marine ecosystem lens. So um, you're going to look at um, coastal populations, oceanic ecosystems, a lot of the biological and physical processes that um, affect organisms in a marine ecosystem. So um, it's a very broad major ecologically, and it is uh, going to cover a kind of a very large cross section of marine uh, biology. So there's a lot of lab and field opportunities in this major. Again, in this major, students take a fairly large uh, curriculum in lab uh, sciences. So students get a lot of lab coursework under their belt, which is a great uh, preparation for a career in the biological sciences. And there's lots of field opportunities. So students get to go out on field trips again in this major as well. Um, they get to go out on boats. They get to go out on the Scripps Pier. Um, they get to go do a lot of cool stuff and look at lots of little neat critters out in the uh, ocean and in local uh, coastal areas too. Um, again, like the uh, earth sciences major, we expect all students transferring in with marine biology to have more or less all of their lower division major coursework done before they transfer. In fact, this is required for marine biology students to transfer in, to be eligible to transfer in. And you can see what those requirements are here, as well as on the UC San Diego admissions uh, website for transfers. Uh, marine biology majors uh, go on to, uh, again, another broad range of careers like earth scientists in research, conservation, environmental consulting, education, biotechnology, uh, health sciences. Again, because you get a strong lab training in this major, Students in the marine biology major are well prepared for careers in uh, biological sciences after they graduate. So um, as our major continues to grow, we see more and more of our graduates go out into the workforce and be uh, very successful. Our newest major is oceanic and atmospheric sciences. This major has been around for three or four years now. Um, and we launched it to kind of complete the trifecta of uh, research topics at Scripps. Um, and it is uh, OAS for short, because Oceanic and Atmospheric Sciences gets kind of tough to say over and over again after a while. So we just call it OAS for short. Um, we primarily look at the physics and chemistry of the oceans and atmospheres um, from a physical sciences standpoint in this major. Some biology content is talked about in a connected way, but it's primarily looking at the physical and chemical processes of the ocean and atmospheric systems. So the major does have a very strong preparation in the physical sciences. Um, there's a, a fairly uh, rigorous preparation in the math and chemistry and physics coursework for that major. Um, but like the other two majors, this major also has a very strong um, research and uh, field component built into it. Students get to go out on our boats, they get to go out on our pier, they get to go on field trips. There's a lot of research opportunities for students in this major and all of our majors. And we'll talk about that uh, specifically more a little bit later. Uh, like the uh, earth and marine biology major, we also expect students from this major, if they're transferring, to have most of the lower division coursework done before they get here. Um, and uh, again, you can see this, uh, this info on the uh, UCSD um, transfer website. Um, uh, again, because this major is new, we don't have a ton of data to say that our graduates go on to do any, X, you know, a lot of X, Y, and Z careers was more and more students graduate from our programs. We start to build that career information, but we expect our students to be strong candidates for graduate programs to work in industries like renewable energy, uh, data science, climate impacts, um, public sector careers like marine technicians at government labs, universities, meteorology uh, institutes. Um, and there's a growing industry of uh, sustainable business practices. Um, and so there's uh, definitely opportunities for students involved in sustainability to get a, a, a career path started with this kind of background as well. 
And that's pretty much it for the Scripps undergraduate curriculum. We're going to shift gears a little bit to our environmental systems interdisciplinary major. Uh, and I'll let uh, Darlene kind of take it away uh, with our environmental systems major. And again, if you have questions come up, feel free to pop those into the chat feature. Um, and um, do we want to, has any questions come in just yet? Um, I don't think I've seen any yet. Uh, we do have one question. Say, okay. Um, that there's a question for, uh, you were reviewing the transfer preparation and one of the requirements is that there must be a grade of C minus or better. Um, and the question is whether that requirement uh, may be waived for the, the current quarter. And I can say that our faculty have agreed to waive that requirement for the courses taken during the fall quarter. The transfer students may choose to take those courses for pass, no pass grades. And I, I believe at some schools, it's, it's either heavily recommended or required that students take courses for pass, no pass grades. So if that is an acceptable option specifically for the fall 2020 quarter. Thank you, Josh. Um, if any questions uh, filter in, we'll go ahead and uh, address those as they come. Uh, again, feel free to use the Q&A feature if you have any questions that we can answer as we go, or otherwise we'll just uh, get to them towards the end of our presentation. Okay, now on to environmental systems with Darlene. All right, thanks, Sid. Um, again, my name is Darlene Garza. As Sid mentioned, I'm one of the other undergraduate advisors for our scripts and environmental systems majors here at UC San Diego. Uh, so Sid, if you can move to the next slide. All right, so our environmental systems program or ESIS as we call it for short, we do have quite a few acronyms uh, in our programs, is an interdisciplinary educational approach that incorporates natural sciences with social sciences and policy tools. Uh, so essentially what this means is we have our majors structured with classes from other departments, such as biology, uh, urban studies and planning, uh, political science classes, things like that, or environmental studies uh, to compose our majors. And we actually have four different tracks in within the ESIS program, which are earth sciences, biology, which is named ecology, behavior, and evolution, environmental chemistry, and environmental policy. These are our four currently. And in addition to that, we do plan to add tracks in climate, environmental health, and engineering sciences. So we hey, expect- um, Darlene, yeah. uh, do you want me to unshare my screen? That way you can share it. That way I don't have to keep clicking for you. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Just a second. Let me open it. Are you able to see it in full screen? Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, cool. All right, so um, again, the four tracks and then the additional tracks are in the works and we plan to um, offer those to students in the coming years. One of the unique features of the Environmental Systems Program is the ESIS Senior Internship Project. All students in the ESIS major, uh, regardless of the track you're doing, uh, complete a senior internship project as part of the requirements for the degree. And so that is something that a lot of students get really excited about. Uh, you're able to explore different areas of environmental sciences that you could get involved in. A lot of our students do uh, research in lab here at Scripps, or they work with a government agency uh, such as like U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services or working with like County of San Diego, City of San Diego. We have students doing internships here at UC San Diego and like our sustainability department. And then we have students working with various nonprofits that are environmentally focused, such as Tree San Diego, Wild Coast, and a many variety of uh, environmental organizations that are here in San Diego. Currently, students are still doing their projects this year. Um, a lot of them have been able to find remote opportunities or some kind of hybrid opportunities. And so they're still able to get that experience um, this year. And then 
you know, years going forward, you can always um, check out our website on our scripts website. We have an environmental systems page where you can kind of see more information about the um, ESA senior internship project, but it is something that a lot of our students uh, really enjoy. So along with um, the other Scripps majors, there is re recommended uh, transfer preparation for the ESIS majors. Uh, since we do have different tracks, the uh, required or meet the recommended coursework is a bit different between the majors for ecology, behavior, and evolution. You have biology, chemistry, math. Um, the environmental policy is probably the one that is a little bit different because it has an econ class that you we would recommend taking before um, transferring to UC San Diego and an ESIS major. Uh, something uh, else I wanted to mention was the um, assist.org website is a very good resource for that information about transferring courses to UC San Diego. And as Josh had mentioned previously, when we answered the question uh, before, you would be able to do pass and pass for this fall. Uh, so career opportunities in uh, environmental systems. This major is designed to meet the growing need for environmental specialists. Um, and we have graduates uh, that go into pretty much every aspect of career for environmental protection, including regulatory work, consulting, governmental work, and nonprofits. And that's, as you can imagine, kind of similar to what people, what students do for their internship projects, projects end up being what they you know, pursue in a career. We've even had students who have their senior internship project turn into a full-time position once they're done and once they finish their degree. Uh, students also pursue a wide uh, range of graduate degrees, including environmental law, master's in public policy, public health, environmental management, or they go on to do research and get a PhD. And so to touch a little more on uh, some of the two uh, more popular minors among our program, uh, the marine science minor is ocean related science um, that we believe that ocean related science is relevant to many um, environmental issues and problems. And so understanding that is critical to earth system evolution, dynamics, climate sustainability. Um, the minor consists of courses and research opportunities offered primarily by faculty and researchers at Scripps. So as Sid had mentioned before, this is more of a STEM-based major. Uh, you'll need, you know, some lower division biology, chemistry, math, things like that in order to take some of the upper division, in order to take most of the upper division classes in the minor. But the benefit of that is being able to take SIO classes. And if you would want to, to do a research track where you would do at least two quarters of independent study, working with uh, researchers as scripts in order to fulfill the requirements for the minor. So it's really um, up to you if you'd like to take all the courses for the minor or do some courses and also do some research along with it. And then to kind of go over a little bit more detail about our climate change studies minor, which is new. Uh, this is the second full year we are offering it here at UC San Diego. Um, the curriculum provides connections with any primary field of study and it's open to students from any major. So as it had mentioned, um, if you don't have as many like lower division STEM classes, this is something you could definitely still do no matter um, what your major is. Uh, the interdisciplinary minor curriculum highlights UC San Diego's broad campus expertise and understanding responded to the challenges of climate change. Um, this is a big emphasis with a lot of our departments on on campus, including at Scripps. So this is this minor is geared towards allowing students to explore all those different areas um, in which we are dealing with climate change studies. Um, a unique part of the climate change studies minor is the practicum requirement. Um, this is where students take some classes on carbon neutrality initiatives and climate change research on campus, and then they complete a project um, relevant to their major interest doing something on campus, um, whether it be with sustainability or like our student garden, stuff like that. So we also have students that have been completing these um, for the past about year or so. And then just to kind of uh, reemphasize some unique experiences for our undergraduates 
here at Scripps. Um, on the left, you could see a picture of one of our research specials that students get to go on, if, depending on what uh, undergraduate courses you're taking. And then also we have things such as our Meet the Beach event, where you can see a lot of students gather out on the beach. You could do surfing lessons. Um, we specifically usually do peer tours. So like myself or Sid or Josh will take students out on the pier so you could go see the cool views. Um, it is a research pier, so it's typically locked. So being able to go on it is for a unique experience. And also if you're uh, taking Scripps classes, you would also have the opportunity to, to go out on the pier as well. So research, um, this is usually a big interest of students who uh, are considering majors at Scripps or just interested in Scripps overall. So students are able to do research in different capacities, including uh, volunteering, uh, doing paid work study or, you know, being hired as employees. Uh, you can also look into getting um, research scholarships or fellowships. The academic um, enrichment program here at UC San Diego has a lot of different things that they uh, send to students. And we try to make sure to send them out to our students as well. So you could apply for funds and have your research paid for, whether it's during the academic year or even during the summer, if you're able to, uh, get some funding. Uh, you could also earn academic credit. As I mentioned before, you have a um, 199 course that is independent study with, or independent research with faculty, um, which you can do with uh, Scripps faculty. And if you want to uh, just kind of search through the different kinds of areas of research and topics that Scripps faculty uh, work on, as Sid mentioned is pretty wide. And so you could go to our website, scripts.ucsd.edu slash research. And there's a bunch of different topics you can explore and labs to kind of see what everyone is doing here at Scripps. And so just to um, emphasize some of our strengths for the Scripps undergraduate program, um, we really feel we have, you know, dedication and excitement brought to the program by Scripps, our faculty and graduate students uh, that work as TAs in SIO courses. Um, students have access to Scripps faculty through uh, classes that have low enrollment, you know, our upper division course offerings. And then, as we've said, particularly field and lab courses, which we have uh, quite a number of. Uh, we get positive feedback from you know, students on almost all aspects of our courses, our advising and resources for our majors. And then we, you know, pride ourselves on having unique undergraduate opportunities that fit the Scripps mission and that just are able to enrich your experience here as a student at UC San Diego. And so now we can um, open it up to questions. Darling, we do have still a few questions in the Q&A feature. Uh, I'm actually in the process of answering one of them right now. Uh, but this is a question that's related to ESIS that maybe you can answer. It says that they're interested in urban studies and environmental systems. Um, would you recommend the ESIS uh, or uh, the urban studies major? Uh, or is there a combination of majors and minors? You can maybe talk about the difference between our major and urban studies. Yeah, so um, environmental systems definitely is more, depending on what um, track you do, that's kind of where you could specialize in a certain area. Um, the unique thing about the ESIS major is that we do still have for all the major tracks, you know, lower division STEM courses. So biology, chemistry, math, um, where urban studies and planning might not have that many science, doesn't have as many science courses at the lower division. So you kind of really build that uh, science foundation with the ESIS major. Um, and then we have, we also have a minor, I don't think I mentioned, but we, there's an ESIS minor that Sid, I think mentioned at the start of the um, presentation. So you could do a combination of ESIS minor, urban studies planning uh, major, or the other way around where you do an ESIS major or and an urban studies planning minor. So there's a lot of different kind of ways to um, combine your interests here at UC San Diego overall. And I think for us, uh, we pride ourselves on the fact that the environmental systems majors can accommodate, you know, another minor or some students double major if that's something you're really ambitious about doing. Um, so 
definitely coming to talk to us or contacting myself or Sid to kind of narrow down what you think would work best for you is always a good idea. And we're always available to talk to you about that. And uh, I don't know if Josh is uh, still listening in, but maybe this is a question he can answer. Um, when will those new tracks of ESIS be available? Or do we have any updates on our timeline for any of those? Those are still a little bit early in the planning stages. So it would likely be another um, year or two before those are fully implemented. Um, they are, they are at the conceptual stage where our faculty are looking at what courses are available and what um, they would really want the curriculum to look like. So as Darling was describing some of the environmental systems majors, one of the, the key points is that they are very interdisciplinary. And part of what that means is that they rely heavily on coursework being offered in other departments and kind of compiling those courses into new and different forms of curriculum than they were initially designed for. So there is a lot of thought that goes into making sure that um, a new track in something like environmental systems is coherent and cohesive and, uh, and can be reliably offered to students. And since I've got you talking, another question is how many students get accepted to the marine biology major each year? You know, you can probably tell me that off the top of your head. That's a good question. I, I don't actually know. So we're, um, our department, uh, the way admissions works at UC San Diego is uh, our department isn't directly involved with the process. Um, so we often don't really know how many applicants we get or how many students are admitted. We usually just see the end result of how many students show up in the, the fall to start taking our, our courses. Great. Uh, let's see, another question is, uh, is a dual major between marine bio and environmental systems an option or a minor in one? Um, yes, we have had a few students major, uh, the, more, the most common uh, major minor combination we've seen is an environmental systems major with a marine sciences minor. Um, we have occasion, I think I've seen maybe one or two students do a marine bio major with an ESIS minor. Um, but yes, that is something that's uh, fairly common. In fact, um, before the marine biology major existed, that's, that was actually one of the biggest reasons we created a marine biology major was because we had a significant number of students in the ESIS EBE track, uh, adding a marine sciences minor to kind of create their own marine bio major on their own. Um, so that's kind of a big reason we created the marine bio major. Uh, and uh, I can cover this also. Um, another question is how much time is spent at Scripps versus the main campus during the marine bio major? Uh, and what's the distance between the two? That's a great question. Uh, I would say, uh, and this is true for probably all of the Scripps majors, not just marine bio, but this is true for earth sciences and ocean atmospheric sciences. Um, the majority of your time in probably your first two years here is going to be spent on the main UCSD campus. Um, there will be a few classes here and there that you'll get to take down at the Scripps campus um, in your early time, but the most of the coursework you'll be doing in your first and second year at UCSD is going to be your lower division major prep coursework, which is almost always going to be taught on the main UCSD campus. As you get deeper into your major, you'll spend more and more time down at the Scripps campus. And it's not uncommon to, by the time you're a senior, to basically be spending all of your time down at the Scripps campus. Um, there are lots of ways to get involved with the Scripps community early on um, besides courses. There is a student group uh, for undergraduates at Scripps uh, that ESIS majors are welcome to join as well. Um, but the uh, split is generally uh, most of your time on the main campus early in your career and most of your time at Scripps at the end of your career. The distance between the two is about a 10 minute shuttle ride. There's a shuttle that runs back and forth between the Scripps campus and the UCSD campus uh, every 15 minutes, generally during normal uh, academic sessions. Uh, and it takes about 10 minutes to get between the two. It's about a 30 minute walk um, to go between the two. It is uh, a very, very, uh, intense hill though. So going downhill is not too bad. Walking uphill is very uh, 
Nobody recommends walking Exhausting. uphill, basically. Yeah. Don't walk uphill, ever. <laughs> Just don't even do it. I mean, you can do it, but you're going to have uh, quite a workout doing that. Uh, what kinds of research opportunities have you guys done? I haven't done any of them. Uh, I uh, and Darlene uh, is uh, and Josh either. Uh, we're actually not uh, researchers for Scripps. We are academic uh, staff, um, so we're not part of the research uh, community at Scripps. But we've been here for quite a while, and we're pretty plugged into what the researchers are doing. But uh, neither of us are actually uh, researchers. Um, let's see, uh, are there opportunities to do a double major that incorporates marine bio? Uh, yes, uh, there are uh, a lot of opportunities to do a double major at UC San Diego. Um, marine biology major is no exception. Um, there are quite a number of marine bio double majors up there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's common, um, but it's not rare either. Um, to do a double major with marine bio and another major. We would recommend that you choose a non-bio major if you are choosing a second major. Uh, uh, so you wouldn't really want to do a marine bio major and another major in a biology field. That's not really a uh, compelling double major. Uh, is it easy to change tracks in ESIS? For example, I applied for the bio track, but want to switch to the chemistry track. Would that be a difficult change? Um, Darlene, what, uh, what would you say to that one? Uh, it depends. E the requirements um, in the lower division are pretty different for those two tracks. So um, switching from the biology one to earth sciences would mean uh, the higher level math and physics. So as long as you have a math 20 or equivalent to math 20 series and physics two series, you could uh, switch pretty easily between them because those count for both. But if you were um, doing the lower division math series, math 10 and lower division, I mean, lower uh, physics series, physics one, series that would be more challenging because you'd either have to switch what you're doing and you, or kind of like start over. So if you do it right at the start, it wouldn't really be um, any kind of deterrent because then you could just change and then continue on for the requirements for the other track uh, that you want to switch to. Yeah. Another question asks, what's the average class size? Darling, you want to fill that one too? Uh, for our SRO classes, uh, it's pretty small. Um, I don't, I mean, some of our pictures, you could see our buildings. We generally have smaller buildings than the one on upper campus. So classes can't be that large. We only have like one larger lecture hall. So um, once you're taking your upper division SIO courses, it's, you know, 30, 40 students or e-labs could be even smaller because uh, they are taking place in a research lab. So space is a little more limited, which means you're having, you know, more interaction uh, with faculty in those types of classes. Great. Uh, it's not uncommon to take a class at Scripps with like 10 people in it also. That's, that's something that happens all the time. Um, can biomedical science courses be involved with environmental science courses? If so, what career opportunities might this bring? So there's uh, quite a few classes in the ecology, behavior, and evolution track specifically that pull from the Division of Biological Sciences uh, career, uh, curriculum. Um, and in that curriculum, they do have quite a few biomedical-based kind of courses that you'd see. Um, so sometimes uh, students can choose courses from that kind of uh, uh, area uh, in the biology sector and then use those for their ESIS major. I would say most of the courses in the biological uh, division of biological sciences that the ESIS major accepts are from the EBE, the ecology section though. So there's some biomedical courses that can be used in the ESIS major, um, but primarily it's the ecology type courses from the biology um, department. Um, let's see. Uh, Uh, I want to major in marine, let's see, uh, let's see, I want to major in marine science, what minor is recommended to take with marine science? Um, there's no recommendations for any specific minors. Um, you can't, minors are entirely optional. Um, the uh, minors, there's, uh, the minors are always up to the student. And if uh, you have an interest in something um, and it's not going to significantly impact your graduation timeline, 
um, you can choose whatever money you want, even if it's completely unrelated to uh, your major. And that's totally fine. Uh, is it possible to double major or have multiple minors in addition to a major at Scripps? If possible, how practical is it? Uh, I've kind of covered this a little bit. Um, it is possible to do a double major. Um, all double major applications, by the way, I didn't talk about this earlier, do come through our office. So if you want to double major, you have to sit down with us uh, and as well as the advisors for the other department you plan to major with, double major with. And we will uh, make sure that the plan you have to do that double major makes sense. Um, adding multiple minors um, is again uh, entirely optional uh, and that's kind of up to you. And as long as you can fit it in, um, knock yourself out. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one that I'm sure is on a lot of people's minds. How has COVID been affecting the Scripps majors? Darlene, you want to go for that one? Uh, yeah, so we have had primarily in spring, everything went remote. So our, all our classes were offered remotely, same with summer, fall. Uh, we started with some in-person classes. Um, particularly, we still had um, a lab that was being offered in person that students were able to take. And um, just recently, uh, things switched that classes are now remote or outdoors. So we've been having students um, are like just this week uh, transitioning, as I think everyone knows, things can change pretty quickly with COVID. But overall talking, I know for me and myself and Sid, like talking to our students, everyone still seems that, you know, good spirits, still enjoying their courses and still able to uh, take the classes they need and that they're interested in. We still have students that are doing, you know, research remotely um, or some that um, have maybe done something over the summer. So. Of course, it is an impact. Um, we have had some labs that would normally be offered in person, offered remotely. Uh, so that's a different experience. But overall, we found that our SO and ESA students are still able to accomplish what they need. Um, and the feedback has generally been pretty positive regarding uh, the courses and the way that faculty are able to still um, you know, get things done for the students. Yeah. Uh, our faculty have been working uh, so hard uh, to keep, try to keep things as normal as possible for students. Um, some have completely redesigned their courses for students to be able to access the content, um, sometimes in a very short amount of time. Um, they've tried really hard to keep things um, as, as normal and as um, useful for students uh, as we try to manage this um, situation. Uh, and hopefully it's not forever. Uh, it's not gonna be forever. Uh, but it's, uh, it's something that uh, we're adapting to, and I think our faculty are working super hard to try to keep things as many as possible, as, as normal as possible, and I think they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, is there anything posted online already, like recorded lectures related to Scripps majors, lecture material that can give students a taste of what learning at Scripps would be like? Um, I don't think so. Most of the course content that you would find is um, protected behind a course uh, sign-in. So you actually have to be a member of that course to access course materials like that. Um, so I don't think there's any course material or lectures posted publicly. Um, Josh, if, if, if I'm mistaken there, um, go ahead and chime in and let me know um, if there's someplace that I just don't know about. But as far as I know, most course content is um, only accessible privately. Uh, let's see, uh, any advice um, uh, for current juniors on what classes or extracurricular activities for high school students, uh, especially with pandemic, it's hard to volunteer. Yeah, great question. Um, to uh, start off, as Josh mentioned earlier, we actually don't have any direct impact on the admissions process. So while there's lots of interesting things that would be great to be a cool marine biology uh, student, uh, whatever is going to help you and gain admission to the university is what you should really be focusing on. So um, you definitely want to talk to an admissions representative for uh, what kinds of things you could be doing to improve your uh, chances of being admitted to the university. But just know you don't have to do anything special for us. Um, there's no separate application to get into Scripps. Um, we don't, um, we're not the ones who are um, looking at your applications. And just to add, uh, I'll switch this slide 
um, said, I think I have our contact information oh, yeah. for us and go. then cool. admission. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you have questions for an admissions representative, you can find that info here. Um, Josh, actually, um, going back to a question a minute ago, um, there is a Scripps uh, YouTube channel. Um, so there's a lot of cool Scripps content on that YouTube channel for anybody who's looking for Scripps content. Um, if you're accepted into UCSD, are you automatically in, accepted into the Scripps program? If you chose one of the Scripps majors as your preferred major, then yes. Um, there is no uh, separate secondary process to get into one of the Scripps majors. Um, if you major in marine biology, can you focus on animals specifically? Um, kind of. There's going to be a lot of coursework that's required that's maybe not going to cover specific animals, but there are certain classes that exist in the marine biology major that do cover specific um, types of animal life. There's microbiology courses, there's marine mammal courses, there's uh, biology of fishes lab courses, there's um, quite a broad uh, arrangement of just animal um, uh, marine biology content. Uh, what non-bio majors or minors would you recommend taking with marine bio? Um, any of them uh, could be uh, accessible uh, with a minor, I think. Uh, so the marine science minor and the earth sciences minor, like I mentioned earlier, is probably better for a STEM major. Um, but um, I don't know that there's any uh, recommendations we have uh, to do a, a major or minor or a double major with marine bio. The only recommendation we have is don't do another bio type major. Uh, how many hours of class do students typically have each week and how much homework outside of class? Ooh, good question. Depends on entirely how much you schedule for yourself. So um, you get to choose your course schedule every quarter. Um, so you get to pick how many classes you're taking um, and uh, whatever workload you want to manage is up to you in a way. Um, students typically choose three or four classes in any given quarter and how much work each of those classes have is kind of up in the air. Some classes have quite a bit of work, some classes have less work. Um, a full-time student generally means you're spending about 30 to 40 hours a week total in all of your schoolwork. Uh, Darlene, are any of the Scripps majors impacted? Capped? Is that what that means? Capped, yes. <laughs> okay, we call it capped. Uh, so no, they're not. Uh, we do not, for current students, the way you change to a Scripps major is to use TrainLink and change your major to Scripps. It is easy to actually do the change, but we would always recommend coming to talk to myself or Sid before you actually change your major, especially since a lot of the other majors at UCSD are capped or impacted, so you can't easily change back. So before you ever make any change to your major, you always wanna to talk to the department you're um, thinking of changing to, as well as double checking with your current major department about what the, um, what the ability you would have or not to change back to their major. So you always wanna to talk to both departments um, in any case, even though, yes, for Scripps majors, you are allowed to change without actually like going through another like application process, which you would have to do for any CAP majors. Uh, are there any living learning communities associated to Scripps students? Uh, for example, if you wanna live near each other, eat with each other. Um, so uh, at UC San Diego, um, the student body is divided into seven colleges. Uh, probably eight colleges at some point, and then maybe nine colleges at some point. But right now there are seven colleges and they have nothing to do with what your major is. So you can be from any of the seven colleges and choose any major at UC San Diego. Now, where you live on campus, generally, if you live on campus, is based on your college. So students from any major can be living uh, in their college area of campus. So there's not really any specific area for Scripps students. Uh, we have students from all seven colleges in our majors. But Scripps majors do tend to uh, congregate themselves uh, around the Scripps campus kind of on their own. 
And uh, as a Scripps student, you'll see a lot of familiar faces, you know, going back and forth between the Scripps campus and the main UCSD campus on the shuttle and things like that. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but I guess if somebody wants a bit more info about why, if you're doing a double major, to not choose another bio-based major. And that's a good question. The short answer is because you just look like a super duper bio major rather than a, a student with two uh, areas of expertise. You look just like one student with a lot of bio expertise. Um, and that doesn't really get you as much of a return on your investment, so to speak, uh, to use the phrase, um, with both the time and energy it takes to do a double major. Doing a double major is quite a bit of work. Um, so you kind of want to have a broad uh, uh, area of knowledge covered when you do a double major and adding a second bio major just doesn't really add too much in terms of the uh, breadth of your study. Uh, which college is closest to Scripps? Uh, either Ravel or Muir College, I would say, are closest to Scripps. But uh, even Ravel and Muir College, I wouldn't say are easier, make it that much easier. It's probably only a couple minutes difference. Um, to get from one of those colleges to the Scripps campus. Uh, what UCSD colleges are the most popular for Scripps students to come from? Uh, we actually have a pretty fairly uh, equal representation from all the colleges in our majors. Uh, each college has its own themes. Um, I would say Muir College because the themes of Muir College are things like environmental uh, conservation and things like that. There's maybe just a little bit of overlap in students who'd be interested in that and students who happen to be interested in things like marine biology and earth sciences. So maybe Muir College, we probably have a bigger splash of students from Muir College, but otherwise um, we have students pretty equally represented from all the seven colleges. Let's see, for transfer students, is there a board or somewhere to find a roommate that's in SAO for anything like that? Uh, good question. I'm actually not really plugged into that kind of answer. Um, that is probably something you maybe want to go ask on the UCSD subreddit or uh, UCSD Facebook pages or something like that. Um, I'm not super plugged into the student community in terms of housing or things like that, but I'm I sure think there's plenty of SAO majors out there. I think uh, UCSD housing does have some references on their webpage about where you could potentially go look also. And that kind of covers it. We had a lot of questions um, today. Thanks for everybody that asked the question. If you have any more, we've got a couple minutes left if you want to throw them into the Q&A feature. Um, and we'll uh, answer them as best we can. Uh, marine biology is not an impacted major. Um, you can add the uh, marine biology major without any extra application. Uh, can you start working with us uh, as early as, so uh, do we start working with you as freshmen or only in upper division courses? You can come to us and talk to us whenever you want. As early as soon as you get here, all the way up through graduation, um, we'll be the advisors for you for your entirety uh, of your time here. Uh, if you're talking more about doing research or getting involved in Scripps in general, you can start doing that as early as you want. Um, um, nothing at Scripps in the community is really restricted to students by grade level, except for a couple, you know, courses here and there. Darlene, what is your personal favorite part of SIO? One of these questions says. The view, this behind me right here. <laughs> Uh, it yeah. can't get better than that. We have, when we have events, Scripps Day, um, it's really cool to be a part of Scripps. Um, even, I don't know if Sid's experience is the same, but I'm a little bit newer than him. So when people ask me where I work at, just at UC San Diego, and I say Scripps, 
uh, they think it's pretty cool. And that's just the people that work there. So it's definitely cool to be a student at Scripps as well. Uh, I like going to work here. I miss it for sure because we're at home right now. <laughs> yeah, the pictures in our backgrounds are from the Scripps campus. These are the these are real places that you'd get to go to every single day during normal times. Um, but the campus is open, so you can kind of wander around there. Um, do students typically graduate in marine biology in four years? Yes. Um, the marine biology major can actually be finished in three years if you really wanted to just crank out all your classes. And we've had students do that. Um, so yes, the marine biology major can easily be finished in four years. Um, are we the only two advisors for all of scripts? No. Uh, Josh Reeves is also uh, part of our advising staff, but J uh, Darlene and I are primarily the two advisors for the undergraduate students, yes. And we are a smaller department, so me and Sid are usually always available um, during walk-in hours or right now via Zoom. It's pretty easy to schedule things with us, so that is kind of a nice part of um, being one of our majors as well. Yeah, just for some context, we have about 800 students across all of our majors, uh, Scripps and ESIS. Um, so we're not a big department compared to some of the other departments on campus. Some departments on campus have thousands of students in them, um, but we're not exact. We're not a tiny department either, but we're a pretty small department. Uh, if you're not able to double major across majors in SIO, are you able to minor in multiple SIO majors, minors with an SIO major? Uh, it depends, is the short answer. It depends on what you're doing. Um, you'd want to talk to us individually about what your plans are for that. What is Scripps Day? Um, Scripps Day is a annual event where we invite uh, everyone in the Scripps community to come to the Scripps campus and celebrate everything that Scripps is and does. And um, it uh, is a way to showcase uh, research that Scripps has done. Uh, there's lots of um, uh, seminars and lectures and just cool events. Um, people get to tour the Scripps campus during Scripps Day. Uh, and there's some social events as well. Uh, so Scripps Day is a cool uh, event to come to if you ever get a chance. Um, we are about at time right now, so um, I'm going to go ahead and say please uh, hold off on adding any more questions to the Q&A feature. Um, one last question uh, is, um, uh, can you major in OA OAS and minor in climate change studies and marine science? Um, you probably wouldn't want to. There's a, quite a lot of overlap between that major and minor, so you wouldn't need to do that. Uh, when is a minor able to be declared or doubling up? Um, you can declare a minor uh, basically any time um, in your undergraduate program. Um, you might get a couple um, uh, barriers thrown up to you from the system if you have too many units or things like that, but you can usually still declare a minor um, as long as it's not going to affect your graduation timeline. Uh, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and say, um, uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, hopefully we covered everything and answered all your questions that have been, um, you know, uh, that you guys were hoping for. Um, if you have questions or anything else that comes up or you just want to talk to us about scripts, um, our contact info is uh, there on the page. Um, I'm uh, Sid Eads again and um, Darlene uh, Garza is also uh, open for questions. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, 